When it comes to electric vehicles, are you prepared for the future? As Ford has a better idea, Ford has now released news of the introduction of their next generation EV battery, which they claim will be 100 times faster. So what does this portend for battery-powered automobiles? Put on your seatbelts because you're about to go on a wild voyage into Ford's cutting-edge future. You're watching Tech Addicts, let's look at what Ford has to offer. Ford has announced plans to build a $3.5 billion electric vehicle factory in the state of Michigan, the company's home state. The factory will produce electric vehicle batteries with a lithium iron phosphate chemistry which the company claims are more long-lasting, faster charging, and more affordable than the company's current lineup of electric vehicles. The automaker emphasized that it will own and operate the plant outright through its wholly owned subsidiary. Ford will develop the LFP batteries in conjunction with China's Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited, or CATL, a global producer of electric vehicle batteries. However, the Chinese company will only provide knowledge and services. The construction project will result in the creation of 2,500 new jobs for the local economy, and it is anticipated that beginning production would begin in the year of 2026. Ford asserts that it is the only automobile manufacturer to commit to simultaneously developing two distinct battery chemistries for its electric vehicles, lithium iron phosphate, often known as LFP, and nickel cobalt manganese, or NCM. Tesla is also manufacturing automobiles that are powered by LFP batteries. The majority of electric vehicles on the market today are powered by lithium-ion batteries, the cathodes of which are powered by NCM chemistry. But MCM also has a lot of baggage, mostly due to cobalt, which has been called the blood diamond of batteries, because it is mined in a way that puts child laborers at risk and destroys the environment in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. On the other hand, LFP batteries are typically less expensive and have a longer lifespan than NCM batteries, but they do not pack as much energy into their cells. The manufacturing process for LFP batteries is also simpler. According to the company, the addition of the new factory with CATL will result in an increase of roughly 35 gigawatt hours of LFP battery capacity. During a meeting with media on Monday, Lisa Drake, vice president of EV industrialization at Ford Model E, the company's EV business, stated that the vehicle's batteries are exceptionally durable as well as able to handle more frequent and faster DC fast charging, as they genuinely work to their full potential when they are being charged from 0 to 100% on a consistent basis. Customers who wish to drive their vehicles all the way down to empty and then fast charge them back up to 100% can take advantage of this feature. The vehicles equipped with LFP batteries will also be more economical than Ford's existing portfolio of vehicles. However, the firm was not prepared to disclose how much they will be more affordable. We might not have to wait too long to find out, since the business has stated that it anticipates releasing its first LFP-powered Mustang Mach-E by the end of this year and F-150 Lightning at the beginning of the following year. In an effort to compete with Tesla, the leading seller of electric vehicles, Ford recently reduced the cost of their Mach-E model. They are also able to withstand more frequent and faster DC fast charging in addition to their remarkable durability. Drake stressed that one of the motivations behind the decision to add LFP batteries to its lineup of EVs was the company's goal to save costs. She explained, this is how we look at the recipe to generate one of the lowest cost batteries manufactured in the US when this factory comes online in 2026. The manufacturer, which had a very difficult earnings period during the most recent quarter, is undoubtedly giving a great deal of thought to finding ways to cut costs. Poor execution and deeply ingrained issues in our industrial system, according to Ford CEO Jim Farley, were to blame for the company's failure to capitalize on potential earnings of $2 billion. The declared EV targets of Ford are without a doubt very ambitious. The company has stated that it intends to spend approximately $50 billion in total on its electrification plans, and that by the end of the year 2023, it will have sufficient battery supply to support the production of 600,000 electric vehicles. This includes 270,000 Mustang Mach-Es, 150,000 e-transit delivery vans, 150,000 F-150 Lightnings, and 30,000 units of a mystery all-new midsize SUV that is destined to be released in Europe. By the end of the year 2026, this figure is expected to rise to 2 million EVs around the globe. 
The fact that Ford is the latest automaker to announce a major electric vehicle factory project that will be located in the U.S. is a sign that the tax credits and other financial incentives included in the Inflation Reduction Act of the Biden administration are having the effect that the government intended. They are strengthening the energy and manufacturing infrastructure of the United States. The vehicles equipped with LFP batteries will also be more affordable than those in Ford's current portfolio. However, the firm was not prepared to disclose how much the vehicles will be less expensive. It is the second big EV manufacturing project that Ford has revealed in recent years. The business had previously stated that it would spend $11.4 billion jointly with SK Innovation, a South Korea battery maker, to establish a mega campus in Tennessee and Kentucky for the manufacturing of Ford's electric trucks and SUVs. At the moment, the vast majority of Ford's batteries come from SK Innovation. Ford believes that it will be able to circumvent some of the difficulties that are associated with importing batteries from other countries if it begins manufacturing its own batteries in the United States. It's also vital in guaranteeing that its electric vehicles are eligible for the federal EV tax credit of $7,500 that's offered by the IRA. In order to qualify for this credit, both the vehicle and the battery must be made in North America. Although the IRA outlines battery sourcing requirements that discourage dealings with foreign entities of concern, such as China, we still won't know how the Treasury Department will interpret these rules until sometime in the following month. There have been rumblings about the new factory for several months now. At first, Ford considered constructing it in one of the most impoverished areas of Virginia as part of a larger network of new battery installations across the southern United States. Up to 2,500 new employees may have been generated by the project, which entailed the production of lithium iron phosphate batteries for Ford's electric vehicles. However, Republican Glenn Youngkin, who serves as governor of the state, decided against moving forward with the project due to CATL's participation. He justified his decision by noting the influence of the communist government in China. As the company made promises earlier via announcing of a series of initiatives for sourcing battery capacity and raw materials, these initiatives light a clear path for Ford to reach its targeted annual run rate of 600,000 electric vehicles by the end of 2023 and more than 2 million by the end of 2026. This announcement comes on the heels of the strong demand for Ford's new EVs. As a component of its Ford Plus plan, the firm provided specifics regarding its worldwide vehicle portfolio plans to achieve these production objectives. Ford anticipates that the compound annual growth rate for electric vehicles would approach 90% through 2026, which is more than double the increase that is anticipated for the worldwide industry. Jim Farley, president and CEO of Ford Motor Company, as well as president of Ford Model E, stated that Ford's new electric vehicle lineup has generated great enthusiasm and demand, and that now we are putting the industrial framework in place to expand swiftly. Our Model E team has worked quickly, stayed focused, and been creative in their efforts to source the battery capacity and raw materials necessary to deliver game-changing electric vehicles to millions of customers. Until 2026, Ford intends to invest more than $50 billion in EVs with the end goal of achieving 10% adjusted EBIT margins for the company as a whole and 8% adjusted EBIT margins for EVs. As Ford works to establish a new electric vehicle supply chain that honors its commitments to sustainability and human rights, the company continues to plan for more than half of its global production to consist of EVs by the year 2030 and for the company to reach carbon neutrality on a global scale no later than 2050. So have you driven a Ford lately? That's all for today's video. We'll be right back with more soon, so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.